الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه الله تبارك وتعالى says يا أيها الذين آمنوا أو oh, who believe اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون which verily means fear Allah the way he deserves to be feared and do not die but in a state of Islam this beautiful verse is so important and essential it's telling us that you need to make sure you meet Allah in your best state and state of submission to Allah and state of Islam and how could that be ya Allah we don't know when we will meet that huh, moment of death but he tells us how he tells us first fear Allah the way he deserves to be feared that is your safety net this is your safeguard if you fear Allah, if you appreciate Allah well, then there is no worry. Then you're always ready. Those who really fear Allah, those who are really conscious of Allah, those who have the piety, the taqwa, they're okay. They can meet Allah anytime and they are ready. Those who are really pious, and they know Allah very well then they won't have much to fear when they meet him in fact they would love to meet Allah because this he is the one they love and he's the one they trust he's the source of mercy and in fact they will be happy to meet Allah hmm? so they can huh, receive the return from him subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the recipe although no one love no one likes to die but this is a fact no one stays here forever we all passing by we all departing this world one day sooner or later so let's see how we will and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us beware to do the right thing before you meet me because when you meet me there will be accountability so don't come to me with loads of sins loads of injustices hmm? loads of irresponsibilities the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said kullukum ra'in everyone has a responsibility and should be aware of that responsibility because he will be or she will be questioned so don't huh, be short of your responsibility and then come to Allah and then say oh I didn't have the time to finish my task subhanallah I didn't we give you enough time in that world huh? didn't we give you enough in your life term that you had the time to do everything you want you were able to do yes you did and you will not go back after we leave this world because it's a one way so everyone has a responsibility should be aware of it and he starts from the head of the state to the head of the house to the father to the mother to the child to every, to the teacher uh, to the employee to the employer to the minister uh, to everyone uh, to the servant to the labor has a responsibility I go to work I have eight hours of responsibilities and I have things to do during this time this is my response this is one of my responsibilities am I doing it right uh, then this is okay go to the next I have home I'm trusted at children wife parents sisters neighbors am I doing it right go to the next 
I have a country, I have a society, I have Muslims, I have others. Huh? Everyone according to their capacity. Huh? We have responsibilities, Allah will hold you responsible. Allah will hold the ministers, the king, the presidents, and everyone has a similar one. Huh? But I should worry about my responsibility. Do I do it right? So when I face Allah, he will not ask me about them. He will ask me about me. لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة. No one will leave his position in the day of judgment, and there he will be questions about things. What are these things? It's use. That person will be asked about his life, his or her life, his youth, his knowledge, her knowledge, his money, her money, huh? His, her. Not theirs, not anyone else's. I don't have to worry about others. I have to worry about myself. I have to prepare an answer to everything, to Allah, to the Lord. Then I'm happy to meet Allah. But if not, I'll be very worried to, to die today. But one of the things that's happening frequently nowadays is the sudden death. That many people just feel dead they falling dead without introductions you've seen so many people even people in the tv shows they just huh, fall dead the people in the streets they just fall dead people who are so healthy they still die instantly and so unhappy frequently and maybe Allah knows best because we have good medical huh, attention these days. So people are treated. Yes, yes. They are treated from the illness, but not from death. The Prophet ﷺ told us, Allah created diseases and sicknesses, and he has created cure and treatment for these sicknesses and treatment except death so people could be healthy but they will have to die on time on time uh, on the time that distant for them no they may be healthy well okay fine before people used to fall ill and then spend time when they are ill and then ends up dying. Majority of people like that before, but now too many people die very healthy. Huh? So death has no cure, no treatment. It will end one day. But for our knowledge, in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that Allah sent the angel of death to one of the messengers, to Prophet Moses, and you will know why. This is only for messengers. Huh? Only for messengers. Allah sends the angel of death to them that this is your time and you are dying. Huh? You will die now or at whatever time. Huh? Allah did that to the messengers only. So the angel of death came to Prophet Musa that you will die. So he said, no, I don't want to die now. So the angel came back to Allah and he said, Ya Allah, you sent me to a servant who doesn't want to die. Huh? So Allah told the angel, go back to Moses and tell him, oh Moses, put your hand on the back of a sheep or a cow and you will have as many years as your hand will cover of the number of hairs of that animal. Huh? As many as your hand will touch of the hairs of the back of that animal, you will live. So Musa then said, and then what, Ya Allah? After even if I lived so many years, what's going to happen? He said, you will die. He said, then now. Make it now. Huh? It was the same answer our beloved Prophet also Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the angel came to him, you know the story. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was dying, huh? you know, how did we know? Because Aisha, our mother, may Allah be pleased with her, told us he was saying that. He, he was saying, no, I need the 
heavenly companion. I choose the heavenly companion. I choose the companionship of Allah. She said, I knew this was the angel of death giving him the choice because he was given the choice. The Prophet ﷺ told us before, every messenger was given the choice and everyone chose to meet Allah on time. And Muhammad ﷺ, when he was dying, he was given the choice to stay or to die. He said, no, to die. بَلِ الرَّفِيقُ الْأَعْلَى I choose to join Allah now. And he died. So, because there's nothing to worry about meeting Allah. This, you fear him, but in fact, you love him more. You love him more and you love to meet him. You've been doing all this work to meet him. So those, so death itself is never a punishment. Death itself is nothing to worry if we are ready, if we are well prepared, if we have done our jobs. But you know who should be worried much? Those who have blood, huh? who have shared in the shedding of haram, of innocent blood in their huh? hands or necks. They should be very worried about meeting Allah. Those who stole the money of the ummah, they should be very worried. Those who did not observe their responsibility very well and they wasted the resources and the time, they should be worried. Those who attacked the innocent people anyway, they should be, ver should be very worried about meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's inevitable. <laughs> they will have to, but they should be worried. And it better, they better think 10 times now before the time comes because you know it could happen of a sudden and maybe they will not fall ill and they will not have enough time to repent and you know the sudden death the Prophet ﷺ used to ask Allah refuge from the sudden death is there something wrong with the sudden death no but you know for the good people they are saved from any illness or suffering but the, for the bad ones, they don't have the time to repent. They don't have the time to pay back what they have done. They don't have time to fix uh, the, mis the misery they have caused. Uh, and you find many examples of people do that. And Allah does not give them the chances because they are really sealed hearted and they don't deserve it. And Allah knows these people will never come back. Don't die but in state of submission of Allah, of, of Islam. And this, the key of that is Beware of Allah. Be conscious in everything we do. When we talk, when we walk, when we drive, when we put policies, when we draft agreements and contracts, when we collect things, when we pay things, when we uh, do anything, Beware of Allah. Is this right? Is this fair? Or there is injustice going? Because you know what? The Prophet said, Don't any one of you come in the day of judgment fully loaded with injustices. Fully loaded with injustices. Stole this, hit that, offended this, uh, committed that, and then come, Oh Allah, Oh Muhammad. Ah, oh Allah, there's no such thing then. At that time, whether people pray or they don't pray, whether they make dua or not, whether they weep or not, nothing will help. Nothing will help. Huh? Nothing will help but you do good deeds. In this world, one moment, one glance could be enough. One glance, not even a glance, maybe by only intention to do good, it will benefit you. It will be good for us. One moment could save us in this world, but in the hereafter, even if we cry the whole uh, period of 50,000 years of the day of judgment, and centuries and centuries, after, endless centuries after that, nothing will help us. Although one moment now, is so worthy, is so important. One half of a date is acceptable now. 
in the day of judgment, the whole full uh, uh, earth of gold will not be accepted. Uh, in the day of judgment. Those who did not uh, appreciate Allah and prepared themselves now, it's going to be too tough and it's going to be too bad and they should be worried about meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, they will envy those whom they killed. All these atrocities that we have seen in Syria, all these thousands of people who we killed, these criminals will be sorry big time and they would wish they would have been killed rather than being the criminals. Because of what Allah has rewarded these innocent victims and the punishment that's awaiting for these criminals. Not only the ones who shot them or blew them up, but also those who ordered them to be killed. Also those who were silent about it. Also those who were able to stop it and they couldn't, and they did not do it. A'udhu Billah. Because it's responsibilities. Allah said, everyone will be questioned. Everyone will be questioned. With a, they were able to do something and they didn't do it. They will not ask me about them. They will ask me, him, ask me about me. And you will be asked about you and so on. So dying on the state of Islam could be easy. But it's easy now. Not when it's too late after we don't have the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the knowledge and the understanding and the courage to fix things now and to die on the state of full submission and of iman. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. May Allah make this country safe and peaceful and Syria and Iraq and Palestine and Egypt and Yemen and all around. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Wa sallillahumma wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.